Hello and welcome to Folks. My name is Sharon Elizabeth Sexton, producer of Folks. The civil rights cause has produced a number of organizations whose roles have varied with historical forces of time and circumstance, particularly as they affect black people. Here in Louisiana, the civil rights movement has been very active. Over the years, we have seen many marches and rallies culminate on the front steps of the state capitol. Not only is the civil rights movement still alive, it's also been very visible here recently in Louisiana with visits by Benjamin Hooks of the NAACP and Jesse Jackson of Operation Push. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Hinton. And I'm Genevieve Stewart. As we enter this Thanksgiving season, we'll share with you some highlights of an American Indian celebration that recently took place in Shreveport. We'll be looking at some Native American dances and at a fascinating field game called stickball. We'll have some information on a new job training program and some helpful hints that just might come in handy as you prepare that Thanksgiving Day dinner. All of that and more today on Folks. Jesse Jackson carried Louisiana in last spring's presidential primary, but can he deliver the Rainbow Coalition for Democrats in November? In our one-to-one -one segment, Genevieve Stewart talks to Dr. Jewel Prestige, the first black woman in the country to earn a PhD in political science. And then we'll take you to Plaisance, Louisiana for something described as a foot-stomping good time. I'm Rob Hinton, and we'll have those stories today on Folks. Rob Hinton, Sonia Massengale, and Folks. The new season begins Sunday, October 6th at 5, here on LPB. Five years of Folks. Quite an accomplishment, if I do say so myself. Well, I remember when the program first premiered back in the fall of 1981, even though I wasn't associated with the show at the time. You know, people often ask me what Folks is all about, and I usually say that it's Louisiana Public Broadcasting's Minority Affairs Program, the only program of its kind that is aired statewide. Now, some people think that Folks is a program just for blacks. Sure, we do feature a lot of black people, but our target audience is a bit broader than that. We focus our attention on all of Louisiana's minorities. Personally, I think that over the past five years, we have taken a look at subjects, issues, and concerns that are of interest to all people, not just minorities. Education is and always has played an important role here on Folks. We have looked at Louisiana's teacher shortage. We talked to teachers and education majors about the NTE, the National Teacher Exam, and its effectiveness in measuring the qualification of our teachers. We witnessed a program commemorating the four girls who integrated the public school system in New Orleans in 1960. Four girls who at the time had no idea of their impact on school desegregation throughout the rest of the state. In May 1984, we visited one of the oldest black colleges in the country, Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. A university, like many other black institutions of higher learning, that is experiencing serious financial problems. So serious, in fact, that students had to take to the streets with tin cans to collect money to pay some of the university's utility bills. There was some doubt about whether Fisk would be able to keep open its doors, but we're happy to say that Fisk today is on the road to recovery. We also visited another black college, or more accurately, the ruins of one, Leland University and Baker. We traced its rich history from New Orleans to Baker. Everybody knew everybody, and it was just like a big family and uh, just like a big family, and everybody knew everybody, and they looked like if they, you know, appreciated everybody. And uh, we went to school. In fact, I had to drive a little forward car, you know, to school, <laughs> and bring the other sisters and brothers, you know, to school. And uh, just had a nice time. And, uh, but they were really strict. You had to learn. That's one thing uh, you, you knew when you left Leland, you knew what you was doing. Southern University is Louisiana's largest black college. It was there that we relived through some of its alumni some sit-in protests that helped to bring integration to Baton Rouge. As I look at the next day, a tremendous number of people again. If you can imagine, March the 30th, if I'm not uh, mistaken, the paper said there were 3,000 black students that marched. Now you must understand, can you understand the commitment of 3,000 students marching from this point downtown to the state capitol and not one word being said? 
thousand people scared hell out of white folk because there was not one word scared daylights out of me because every time we looked up that we were continuously confronted with where are we going next and as recent as last week, we talked to Dr. Joffrey Wissington, the new president at Southern, about the direction that the university will be taking. LSU, Louisiana State University, has begun a campaign aimed at strengthening its black student enrollment. And we talked to officials there about it. The percentage of black people in Louisiana is about 30%. I didn't know that. I didn't think it was quite that high. Maybe. I have to find out. But if it's that high, then we should be trying to come that close to a real world balance here at LSU. In other words, I think that the you know, experience here should mirror the real world. And we told you about some of the education programs involving our children. In Lafayette, we visited the program for gifted children. And in Baton Rouge, we told you about latchkey children. One cannot live in Louisiana without talking politics at some time or another. We all know that politics is big business and folks has never lacked for outspoken politicians. One person we have featured over each of the five seasons is State Representative Joe Delpit, now Speaker Pro Tem of the Louisiana House. Now let's not forget Rupert Richardson, President of the Louisiana NAACP, and A.Z. Young, Executive Assistant to the Governor on Minority Affairs. In 1983, Louisiana played host to the National NAACP Convention, where we got a chance to hear from the many contenders for the 1984 Democratic presidential nomination. We also heard from Vice President George Bush. Jesse Jackson had not announced then, but we followed his campaign from Lafayette, Louisiana to San Francisco, California. It was history in the making. Sometimes our senior citizens feel as though they are forgotten, but never here on folks. We have visited them in nursing homes, senior centers, and at the Louisiana Senior Games. The list of issues and concerns featured on folks is endless. I've only been associated with folks for several months now, but I've taken the time to go through the video archives. And the one thing that I've noticed is the enormous amount of attention focused upon women. Women in business, women in politics, women in the arts, well the list goes on and on. So let's take some time now to look at some of the women and some of the women's issues that folks has focused upon in the last five years. First, to look at women in the arts. The very first folks program featured primitive painter Clementine Hunter of Natchitoches and her works. On one of many visits to New Orleans, folks met Lula Elsie, a choreographer who has danced her way from Louisiana to New York to Russia. That was interesting. It was wonderful because all the people who were there who were dancers were dancers, you know. They, that were going to be their whole life. And you could tell, you know, they were very serious. And then when you have 80 people and they're all good, you know, it gives you something else to strive for. So that was an interesting trip. I enjoy that. Folks has also featured a number of women in politics like Debbie Pope, the first female mayor of Hammond. Being mayor to me is not because of a status position. The title certainly gives you responsibilities and avenues that normally an individual wouldn't have. but. I was born and raised here. Um, I truly have a sincere interest in the city of Hammond. My overall goal was to attempt to get the city back on a direct course with a particular golden mine, with adequate surplus to do planning for the future. And what I walked into was almost a nightmare. Uh, there were discrepancies everywhere. Uh, we were not in the best financial position. We got a sales tax passed under my administration. We've been awarded several state and federal grants for improvements. And I guess that that's what being mayor means to me, is trying to better the community as a whole because I intend to live here the rest of my life, whether I'm, I'm in this position or not. Esperanza Scortino is the first person to serve as assistant to the governor on Hispanic American affairs. After 150 years, of the Spanish rule in Louisiana. Governor Edwards, first governor elected for the third term, acknowledged my community. I don't say appointed me. I'm going to say 
uh, pointing a Hispanic speaking person. And I'm so proud. And my community is so proud of. I think we're making history. Governor Edwards is making history. It's a lot of years. And through this office, I remember when the day uh, he appointed me, he said, Esperanza will be there to help the Hispanic American people in any way we can. Over the years, folks has taken a look at many issues as they related to women. The program has taken a look at the violence of rape. Ann Steer told us about the battered women's program in Baton Rouge. And just recently, we took a look at the women's movement. Folks has featured Dr. Jenny Patrick, the first black woman in the country to earn a PhD in chemical engineering. Now you are the first black woman in this country to earn a doctoral degree in chemical engineering. What does that distinction mean to you? Initially, I, I didn't place that much importance on it. Um, but what it really meant to me was that there was something wrong with the system because it was very obvious to me that I was not the most brilliant black woman that had walked through the university doors and that there were other elements that played a major role in my success and such things as understanding the system, having a certain kind of emotional and psychological strength and it meant that um, something had to be done to alert um, and to train other young blacks who had good minds um, more in, in the sense of understanding the system and being able to cope with the pressures that were not academic pressures. And Jewel Prestige, the first black woman to earn a doctoral degree in political science. We have introduced to you a number of women in the field of medicine, like Dr. Velma Jackson, a dentist in Baton Rouge, and Dr. Stella Jones, an obstetrician gynecologist in New Orleans. Oh yes, let's not forget Dr. Sandra Robinson, the first woman and the first black to head up the state's largest agency, the Department of Health and Human Resources. I think that I know uh, what uh, the department is about. I've been a consumer in Louisiana, I've been a provider, and I've been an administrator. And I think those are the tools that you should bring to a job like this. You should have been in all situations. You should have been in situations where you needed to use services in the Department of Health and Human Resources. But also I think it helps very much that I've been a provider of services and a helper in terms of others uh, getting through red tape and bureaucratic situations that uh, require them to, to need uh, DHHR. Folks has taken a look at women in business. For example, Jackie Edgar of Generette the only black woman in the state to own and operate a car dealership. Nobody gave me anything. Jackie Edgar paid her dues. If you want something, get out there and knock on doors and get it. And Freya Rivers, who owns and operates a clothing store for women in Baton Rouge. What was the most difficult aspect in starting your own business? The most difficult aspect of getting started and the most difficult aspect even today is credit. And again, I'm investigating the possibility, is it because I am female or minority or maybe a combination of both? But I found that many businesses smaller than uh, this one, many businesses that are making a lot less money, many businesses that have poor credit are able to get credit. In addition to the focus on women, Folks has also featured several nationally and internationally known figures on the program. For example, there was broadcast journalist Ed Bradley of 60 Minutes fame, State Senator Julian Bond of Georgia, author Alex Haley. Has your family traditionally lifted newborn babies towards the stars and related the family genealogy, or was this merely artistic license? The last time I know it literally happened was my grandfather lifted me. It's a, um, it was a symbol within the family, and it was told always in the stories about how they did it back then. But no, we don't do it uh, uh, now. I know a number of people who have done that, and uh, it's a lovely symbol. But the, the lifting, in practical things, I think the lifting of a child really is 
what you do for that child left, it's, you know, as it's going along, that's how you lift it, really. That, that symbol is fine, but the real, the one that counts is what you do day to day with them. Singer, actress, Lena Horne, and husband and wife acting team, Ruby D and Ossie Davis. As children growing up, was it your dream to become actors? No, I didn't think about it at all. Uh, I, I always wanted to be a writer then. I'd like to be a writer now. You are a writer. Actor, I mean, you're already a writer. Acting got involved in it some way, but mm. uh, I never thought too much about it. Eunice Kennedy Shriver was at LSU for one of the Special Olympic events. Mrs. Shriver, what changes have you seen in the Special Olympics since they began in 1968? Well, the thing you see most of all, I think, is how much better how much more ability these children have in the different sports. It's really amazing, and that has come about because of training. We have good coaches who are well-trained teaching these children to perform in these sports, and that's absolutely essential. And so the times in terms of, the, say, the 50 meter or the mile run or the relays have all vastly improved. The swimming vastly improved. We've got 14 sports now open to these young people and the adults, and, those ch and the children are getting better and better in all of those sports. What do you see as the most important thing coming out of the Special Olympics? I hope a new respect for the mentally retarded, that they can do practically everything that other people can do, and that they have a potential to fulfill, just like the rest of us, and they ought to be given the opportunity to fulfill that. And I think the second most important thing is that parents understand, particularly if their child comes into Special Olympics, he has enormous opportunities to, to develop his, his heart and soul, really, and they do too. And they can understand that their child is somebody, as I say, to respect and to work for. They get into buses, they travel, they spend overnights in motels, they meet great athletes like Rafer Johnson, they participate with thousands of people cheering for them, they're in parades, they see the governor watches them, senators, everybody sees them, and they're proud of their courage. And other people who perform, they don't send the same message that, that the mentally handicapped do. The mentally handy has sent a great message, which is you can overcome anything if you make up your mind that you can. And then there were great musicians like Dizzy Gillespie and Stevie Wonder. I can feel such a chill of a cold annihilation on us all. And if you've listened to the words beneath the singing hummingbird, you'll hear them cry, the warning call. I am a music lover and probably a frustrated musician after studying piano for some 21 years. And I've always been fascinated by the musical talent we have featured on folks. The type of music and the styles have varied greatly. Let's now look back at some of the music featured on folks over the past five years.
You know, a friend once asked me what was the highest compliment paid folks since my affiliation with the program. I told him it occurred one night when I was attending the opera. A little girl about 11 or 12 told me that she watches folks every Sunday. Now for me it wasn't so much what she said, but it was the enthusiasm in the way she said it. She really made me feel very proud of the work we do here. What's in the future for folks? Well, hopefully five more years. Actually, I'd like to see the program become more mainstream with less and less emphasis on minorities. Folks is and always will be a program about people. After all, everybody's just folks. Everybody's just folks. Just plain old folks. Everybody just people. Just play. 